Welcome back guys, what's going on, what's cracking? So, getting this turbo off finally, uh, got it off. Had you cut the damn nut off to get the turbo off this car. So, here's the other nuts, which are all fine. I had to literally cut this one off. So, yeah, that sucked. There's the other piece and some other fell off. Um, got it off, but the stud that was in there is pretty well fucked too. Um, let me go ahead, turbo just falls off now. I should say falls off, pull it off, sit it down. And this stud here is pretty well fucked now. Uh, I might put a new gasket, actually, I will put a new gasket on it too. Might as well go ahead and do all that, but everything else looks okay. The gasket wasn't blown out or anything like that. Manifold looks good, no cracks or anything that I can see. I'll give it that, man. This manifold is stout. Schedule 40, overbuilt to a T and back, but uh, I think that's what makes it so nice and so, well, has worked out so well for me so far. Um, I need to take the wastegate off, but that bolt down there stripped too. After dealing with that, I'm just kind of holding off on that right now. But I'm going to go ahead and take this stud out. Um, I forget if it's reverse thread or not, but I guess I'll find out here in a minute. I'm going to have to put some vice grips on and hope they come off. All right, so since the turbo and everything's off now, I went ahead and did get the stud out. I used some penetrating oil and I uh, had to break it out, so I have to order a new stud. Now, the one thing I am unsure of if I want to order like titanium studs this time around, or what I want to do exactly, because obviously these are seizing up and I can't be having that. Like what happened there last time, I don't want to be going through it again. It's just a pain in the ass. I, I'd rather make it simple. So I'm not sure what I want to do there, but another thing I did do before I sent this off to powder coat is if you've ever owned a Borg Warner, the old S366 series or any 300 series, these flanges are oversized. So I went ahead and ground it down if you see the other side there. I ground this side down because the drain flange was always rubbing against it. A lot of guys use those extended drain lines. Unfortunately, when I ordered mine, uh, this manifold hits it so I couldn't run it. So this fitting here is all, let me take the, this off. I had that on because I was grinding stuff and I didn't want to get anything down the threads. If you look at it here, yeah, it's all boogered up from resting against that plus melting and stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and trim that down some so I didn't have to bang that up anymore. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Uh, but what I'm doing here next is, design of the new catch can. So I do like this design, but if you can see how the lines are, they swoop out too far. I want to suck this back in further. Uh, my idea is this, take this same kind of catch can and I'm going to push it back as far as I can. I'm going to draw it up so it literally runs with the line of this so you can't see any of this back here so it hides all this on top of it and then come out just like it is now. So all these lines will run just right here. Sorry if you guys can hear me belching by the way. I'm, uh, I'm already drinking a beer of course. Uh, so I'm gonna run the lines right through here, push these back, keep them away from the downpipe because I'm eventually gonna go to a four inch downpipe which will get these really close to it. After seeing what Tony went through, I'd rather not. And by pushing it back too, I don't have to make new lines. I might actually have to cut these down some because by pushing it back some, it'll keep this big loop in it and I wanna straighten them out as much as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing this up. Uh, again, I'm gonna use the same size filter, kind of the same basic design. I do like how this bumps up and all that, but I think I'm gonna have, instead of it bumping up like this, I'm gonna have it follow the natural curvature uh, if I can get uh, Goku to do that. Actually, I don't even, what the hell is his real name? I just call him MS Goku all the time because that's his Instagram name. I can't even think of his real name right now. How pathetic is that? But anyways, I digress. Uh, I'm gonna get to start drawing this up here. Uh, then I'll put it in the CAD and get true dimensions for him and send it off. I don't, it'll probably take him two to three weeks. Uh, I'm not gonna sell this one until I get the new one in. I've always done it that I've sold this one first and it kind of sucks because I want to drive the car and I'm just sitting here with my thumb up my ass, which is never fun, uh, unless you're Mike Volka who likes that. So if you guys can see here, I started drawing up. That's my old catch can and there's the new one I'm drawing up right now. I want it to be slightly different. It'll be similar, but different. Like I said, um, it's gonna tuck back the whole way. I'm gonna rerun re -run that wiring so you won't be able to see any of it. The only bit of wiring that you'll be able to see is again, for the sensor here for the AC lines. I'm not sure what that's for. If it's, it's not the switch to kick it on, but it does something. I guess it monitors the pressure. It does something, obviously. Uh, if anyone could tell me what it does, that would be great because I have no freaking clue. What I'm doing next here is taking this off because my new cover comes in today. Uh, so this goes up on the wall and the new one goes on. So take the old impact here and I don't know what I did before impacts because this shit would have sucked, 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 sucked to do. Like boom, boom, boom. So yeah, I'm just gonna take that off. I'm not gonna show you every step because that's boring. All right guys, so good news. Travis just dropped off the new spark plug cover. I'm like super excited right now. Um, I can't say anything like more nice about it. Like they're the nicest people on earth. I, I don't know if it's just me or if it's how I feel, but like I feel like I'm like beyond fortunate because 
everyone is so kind to me, or at least I feel like everyone's really kind to me and very generous to me and I don't know. I just feel like everyone around me is very nice. Like every everyone around me is just good people. Um, but anyways, I, I digress again here. I've got the new cover on and that is blue. And like some people are probably like, oh, it's stupid or it's ugly. Guess what? I don't care. I fucking love it. I just, it came out perfect. Like the, I don't know how he gets everything so perfect. There's literally, there's no nicks. There's no bubbles. He's like, I didn't even touch a buffer on. He's like, I just painted it and gave it to you. I'm like, Ah, it's amazing. So this is a Mustang Grabber Blue. I think it's CI is the paint code or C1, something like that is the paint code color. Um, this camera, like looking at the camera right now, guys, it is making it look a little bit lighter. In person, it's a little bit darker. Um, I guess the brakes look really light too. So the color of the brakes is it matches the cover perfectly. They literally look identical. Uh, I've got everything off, like I said again. It's kind of making me want to coat this, but I gotta leave it like that because I do like all the welds and the colors and stuff from it. But once I get everything else back and it's blacked out, I should be good. Same with the catch can here. I just talked to Goku right now. Uh, he is making the catch can. Uh, I just went over the details, drew everything up. If we go over here, uh, I had to take out the Odyssey battery too. Watching some 1320. That's the only thing I laugh at with 1320. Everything is blurred out. <laughs> Poor guys, everything they do, they have to blur it out. Kyle Loftus is a super nice guy too, by the way. But anyways, so I've got everything drawn out here. Uh, here's the old catch can and uh, move this over. Here's the new one, the design I wanna do. It's similar to the old, but I'm gonna do that angle there. Um, we're gonna do a custom bracket because I don't want it bolting down to the body like the old one did. There's like a little bracket that would have came over here and came out that bolted to the top of the body. The new one's gonna bolt. There's two holes off to the side that I wanted to bolt to um, to make it fit. We're gonna do the same style filter uh, that sits down in, but I'd like to do a plate over top of it with like the, either the M&S or I should say Empire Performance logo or the Pure Function logo, something like that. Um, and keep it pretty similar, but it'll be different. Uh, like I said, it's it, it's gonna be enough to justify getting another one as it's going to follow the body lines a little bit more, unlike this one being perfectly squared off or rectangular shape. This one's actually gonna come over and then go up and follow the body lines of the hood structure, which I'm pretty excited about. Another thing I wanted to say is a big thank you to Jose at Kaizen Motorsports again. Um, he went ahead and sent me this, which is a new cover for my fuel pump. Um, I guess relays and all that stuff are, yeah. Uh, I broke it because I was a drunk idiot one night, which not too surprised about. I broke the cover to it and he saw the video and said, hey, I got a package coming to you. Open it up and it's the cover. Like, I can't, like, why is everyone so kind to me? Like, I don't get it. People are awesome. Um, another thing too, I already posted the video, but everyone I met at MR2 uh, Bear Mountain, awesome. Like, beyond awesome. I had a great time there. Uh, it was good meeting Randy. Um, I get time meeting GD, JD finally. His black MR2 is the JDM equivalent of perfection. Uh, Randy's car is a blue demon. It is, it's, it's shaved and tucked. TCS did such a good job on that. Um, Randy did such a good idea with the way he wanted to lay it out. It's perfect. Again, so to get back off of that, thank you guys very much for the MR2 thing. That, it, that Bear Mountain was awesome, but uh, we need to button this up a little bit here. I'm just dropping this stuff off right now to Brad Decker. Uh, who is in Chambers, I call it Chambersburg area, which is just above me here in Pennsylvania. Uh, have him powder coat everything, get everything glossy and perfect. Uh, once I get that back on, I'll show you guys all that. And I think you'll appreciate what it looks like. Well, now that I've got everything off too, and I'm doing all this, remember guys, I had to go ahead and repin the sensor here. So the sensor for the new air temp, uh, I had to repin it. I just realized that's upside down now. Well, I should have probably, when I had this all apart, I probably should have said, had it facing the other way, just because anal retentiveness, not like it really matters. But Anyways, uh, I'm inside the car now with the laptop because I need to set up for the new air temp sensor. The AM was set up for the old sensor. I need to give this a big yes here. I need to set it up so that it's set up for uh, the AM temp sensor and I'm using my wife's computer so don't mind the pink and the anchor. Uh, my laptop's giving me some issues right now. I'm not sure why, but I'm just gonna use hers because you know you need to have your AM downloaded on both because smart. Alright guys, so I've got it open here. What you need to do is go to basic sensors, air temp sensors, and then you come over here and you're going to want to double click on the grayed out area. Uh, this originally was grayed out. I didn't realize you could double click on it. So you double click on it and then choose the sensor. For me, it's the AMN 8th inch MPT Pro AIT. So I just click, go up here, click OK. 
and then that's it and then it's set up you just uh, go from there once you set up something in the wizard with this uh, you're good and done with the AM infinity so now I'm good to go once I get the intake and all the intercooler piping back I don't have to do anything except turn the car on I might turn it on turn it off key it on just so the car recognizes the correct uh, IAT sensor but just to be safe well my wife's on the phone there she's chatting away I went ahead and took out the pan here for the battery guys so I know this is a little off subject but I took the pan out for the battery that sits up front because I'm having some issues with mounting this in the rear since honestly did give me this I can mount up front the battery does sit lower too which I like um, I can always have this powder coated black so everything else will be black but there's a little bit of red um, and I can always fix this too uh, I just got to keep working with it here but um, I got this plate mounted in here right now. If I take this out, and if I pull the battery, sit that down, good lord, it's heavy. I can customize this bracket to sit down in there. Let me pull this out. I can customize this bottom bracket right now. It's kind of sitting up to one side. If I trim this edge here, because I don't need this, this bolt hole here does me no good anyways. I just need these slots, and then I need to make, I only need two holes to hold it down, and I'm gonna use, so it sits flush, I have a bajillion, uh, see if I got them in here. These are all, I have so many spare bolts. I have a million of these countersunk 10 millimeter bolts. So if I can drill some holes, I'll make countersinks, and these will sit flush with that little bottom pan, and I should be fine. This, I mean, two of these should be enough. If not, I can get the other third hole, because it's only that plastic pan here with this little clip in the back uh, was the only thing that holding the battery in. I actually kind of expect a little bit more. I always forget that it's literally just not much. Maybe I'll pull some of these out, and if I need longer ones, I've got longer ones too. Uh, I just gotta dig for them here. But that's my idea for right now, guys. Um, you can chime in, but I'm gonna start working on this here, get the grinder out, uh, trim this edge off completely because it, if you can see here it humps up I don't want it rubbing on this uh, causing some rust issues down the road So I'm gonna trim this pretty far down and over sit this back this way as far as I can um, I might have to trim it a little bit up here because I don't want to rub it on that and if I need to also uh, What I can do is have this all like I said all powder coated black because it's just raw aluminum right now And I think that'll give it a nice touch and lastly if I need to I'm not sure what to do with the black or the red top. I just don't want to get rid of it. Almost like if I can make it black and then put like take off the Odyssey sticker somehow. I don't know. Get, let me know, guys. I need your opinion. The sticker here faces backwards, so it doesn't matter. So all you see is this black here on the front, um, and I can pull this sticker off here. So I don't know. You guys got to give me some input. So I've got the battery back out again here, guys. Um, I'm not sure what to do with that. I had to take it back out because it just wasn't fitting properly. Um, what I have figured out though, because I wanna get rid of this red top, uh, I'm gonna put something over top of it though because Odyssey was kind enough to send me these batteries for free. Uh, but I'm gonna put a black top over this. I'm gonna have someone 3D print me a ABS plastic. Doesn't need to be anything special because I just need to cover it. Leave these posts open here and this face is back anyway. So just enough of like a skirt to come down over top of this. Um, just literally needs to lay on top and then I'll press it down by using either this top clamp they have back here. I can either use the factory setup either way will work. Um, so that's what I plan on doing with that. I just need to figure out the mounting system here. Phil needs a little bit more room. I need to mess with it more yet. Uh, but another thing just came in. I got some more Oxbeam lights, actually. Uh, these ones are the new updated version. So here is the new one. Uh, comes like a little ballast to give it a little bit more charge of light. And it's a little bit thinner. It's supposed to give better light spread. Here's my old one. Um, now, when I say ballast, you can see it's... I mean, this is gonna tuck away. I mean, it's nothing big or anything. Uh, but here's the old one, which the, this part of it's bigger. It had like a built-in fan before, which personally, I don't think it really did anything. Uh, this one now is like this solid piece of aluminum. This is aluminum too, but this is a little bit smaller. It looks cleaner, nicer. And if you can see the head of it here, see how thin the head is? It's supposed to give better light. Uh, better light off, I guess, or whatever. I'm not sure what, how to say that exactly, but it's supposed to give better light spread. So I'm gonna try replacing the driver's side first, turn the lights on and see what the difference is. As I'm testing it, it's daylight right now. Uh, we've got plans for here tonight. But one thing I forgot to, I need to call, it was ledguys.net or whatever, but that one bulb keeps flickering and stuff. I took the dash apart and checked it and it's still flickering, so I think the bulb must just be junk. So I'm gonna have to call them. I think they're supposed to be lifetime guarantee, but I'm not sure why an LED bulb would be going bad after whatever, five, 6,000 miles. Um, but that's anything besides that anyways. Um, so over here is where I replaced the bulb and the other side, I have not. It, it's hard to tell on camera again, but this doesn't have like, before there's like, 
two parts to it. There's a part where it shot up and shot down, like it, to reflect off everything. Where this is almost like one solid beam coming out of the headlight. Now, if you see there's one solid, this one is like a top and a bottom. And I don't think you'll pick up, I think you can kind of see it there. If you look in the center of it there, you see how it's like a dead black spot there? This one doesn't have it on that side. It's one clear beam. And I think that little bit of separation that I showed you guys makes that difference. See how clear, it's like just a giant white beam coming out of there versus, see the dead black spot in the center there now? This one has it, the new ones don't. Now, do I think it's that big of a deal? No, but looking at it, it looks a little bit brighter. But again, I'm just gonna walk back over here. Um, just the fact that this doesn't have that little separation there, this just seems to give up more clear and precise light. Uh, so I do like this better. I do wish this one was the same as this, how this comes off the bottom, it, it makes tucking the wire a little bit easier. And obviously having this adds a little bit more, um, but again, it's not a whole lot to tuck away. You don't need to bolt this down or anything, you just tuck it down under. So, but pretty happy with it. I uh, just wanted to show you guys that. Thanks again, Oxbeam, uh, I do appreciate it. I always like having light because that's pretty much where I drive this car is at night. Uh, so I do appreciate it. All right guys, finally got the piping. Everything got back. Um, I've already started putting it on because I could not wait. But uh, here's some of the piping over here. I've got the turbo right here. Um, one thing I could have done and I didn't, that's why it probably looks like it's not super, super shiny, is because it still has the rough cast look to it. What you usually have to do is send this out for polishing first, then have it sandblasted again so it's etched enough that you can actually uh, adhere to the surface. And then they have to powder coat it. That would have cost me Probably, actually, no, I know it would cost me. It would cost me more when it costs to have all everything powder coated, just to have this sent out and polished first and then have it powder coated. That's not including the powder. Just the polishing alone would cost more than what did all the powder coat. So that's the reason I didn't. Um, I eventually plan on going to a new turbo setup anyways, but I wanted to go ahead and have this match for what he charges. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and on top of it, the quality is I'm finally happy. If you guys know from my brake debacle, I was so unhappy and I was even really iffy about going to this guy. Uh, his name is Brad Decker out of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I was really iffy about it. People would have recommended him. And I'm like, all right, I'll give this a shot. This is some intercore piping, turbo and stuff. If it doesn't come out, whatever. Um, I go to pick it up and it's perfect. Literally perfect. Like there's marks in it, which is not his job to fix. He's just there to code it. How I bring it to him, that's, that's my issue, not his. Nope, like all the intercore pipings where I had scarred him up and like they had some like, like deep gashes and shit in for me where I took like screwdrivers to pry off couplers, all smoothed out, all part, like you can't tell anything. Like, so he fixed all that without having to do it. That was 100% up to him to do and he did that, so I appreciate that. Um, and then the ceramic coating on the exhaust housing, I'm not sure if I guys to I told you guys I was going to do that. Taped everything off properly, all the flanges are taped off. Um, it's done right. Like everything else I've ever had powder coated was not done this well, so I'm beyond happy right now with the way it looks. And I'm already starting to put the intercooler piping on right now. I've got the new IET sensor in right now. Um, and it fits, of course, it fits perfectly. You can see there, both sides has plenty of room. Putting the T-bolt clamps back on, uh, bolting it up down underneath. The only thing it sucks is I'm missing that one stud still. It was supposed to be here yesterday, Friday, but it will not be until Monday now. So I'm gonna have to wait to bolt up the turbo and stuff, but everything else looks great. And uh, I'm gonna finish at least attaching this for right now. Now, one thing or two I need to point out, if you can see, I have my Odyssey battery back down here again. Um, I'm having a 3D printed cover made for this um, because I don't want the red showing. And then I'm gonna put a big Odyssey decal on the top of it that's blacked out or whatever. It's like black in like silver colors. So I'm gonna make a custom one, but it's gonna cover the top, come down ever so slightly and just have the posts open. Um, I might make it for other people too, if they're interested, to fit these Odyssey batteries up front so they're not redded out. Uh, because I put my, this is an AGM battery also, this just happens to be from, I believe it's advanced auto or something like that, but this is an AGM battery uh, too. It's not an Odyssey battery by any stretch of the means. Literally it weighs half of what that does. You can tell there's just not even close to the amount of lead in this, which means it doesn't have as much conductivity, doesn't have as much cold cranking amps, etc. cetera. Uh, but it's worked so far compared to that one. Did go ahead and just throw that on there just because no more rust, like that looks so much better. Almost makes me wish I would have done the pipes, but I do kind of like the color in this versus that. Um, this will be going soon. That's the only reason I didn't powder coat this before anyone asks. I didn't powder coat this because I'm gonna be getting a new one soon. Um, I have it so it's shaped and fills this area back here so there's not this hole anymore. This is gonna sit back further. It's gonna be slightly different. You know how I am, guys. Every year I get a new one. Uh, the pipe and everything looks good in there. If you can tell, it's not quite as shiny as most. So if you see this versus that, Slightly off, slightly, ever so slightly, but because this isn't a true gloss, this is like a semi-gloss, it kind of works out well because it's like slowly goes into gloss. Whatever, I know it's probably me being anal retentive, um, and I probably should have done this too, but 
See how my anodizing is turning purple on this? It's the only thing I hate about anodized parts. It always turns purple, like a maroon color. Same thing with my wastegate. It's turning like that maroon color from heat. Uh, but next thing I'm gonna do here, because I'll shut up here in a minute, uh, is take my center cartridge here now. Take this, pick this up, sit that right here. And now, gotta be very, very careful and uh, put this all back together on the front side. Leave it loose because I'm gonna have to clock it and move it and do all that fun stuff and then bolt it to the back. Um, this is uh, this is gonna take me a skinny minute. So I'm not gonna record this part just because it's just gonna be me trying to figure out how to get along without damaging the new powder coat. All right guys, on that, I'm gonna be signing off on this one. This is gonna be a long video, so I do apologize for everyone that went the whole way through it. Uh, let me know down below if you made it the whole way through the video to this very end spot. I always like to see who actually makes it the whole way. 20 minute long video, 21 minute long video, I know is long. But thank you guys very much for tuning in today. Uh, should be up and running by the next video, so stay tuned for that. I'll get a startup video and go over everything, and make sure everything's bolted up. New IAT sensors in, so we'll be going to Mexico, you know that. Thank you guys very much. Uh, go check out the Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff down below, and I will talk to you later. Peace!